When Samsung released the FE version of the Tab S9, I was so excited and I couldn't wait to do this comparison with the iPad 10. Both tablets are about the same size and the same price, but the choice wasn't as easy as I initially thought it would be. And by the way, I know prices around the world are very different. So if you're watching this from outside of the US, please let me know in the comment section where you're from and how much each of these tablets cost, because obviously this is a really important factor. And thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring a portion of this video. So the first thing most people consider is the display. And in this case, the iPad 10 has a 10.9 inch liquid retina 60 hertz display with a resolution of 1640 by 2360, a four by three aspect ratio and 264 pixels per inch. The Tab S9 FE also has a 10.9 inch IPS LCD display, but it's a 90 hertz display display, has a resolution of 1440 by 2304, an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, and then a lower pixel density of 249. Now, in terms of image quality, both displays are sharp and crisp. And if I'm being critical, the iPad has better color accuracy and the Tab S9 FE is a bit warmer and has a slight greenish shift. I do like that it's a 90 hertz display on the Tab S9 FE because things like animations and scrolling look smoother. Now, 60 hertz has never really been a deal breaker for me. Like right now, I'm using three different phones, the iPhone 15 Pro Max, the Samsung S23 Ultra, and the Pixel 8 Pro. So. I'm used to 120 hertz, but I think a higher refresh rate is a nice to have, but not critical for most tasks on mobile devices. There are exceptions, of course, like some games, but things got a little strange there. So I'll come back to that in the dedicated gaming section of this video. Now, in terms of aspect ratio, the Tab S9 FE is better suited for watching video because the 16 by 10 aspect ratio is closer to most content and the image is larger and has smaller black bars. Now with the iPad 10, we're getting a four by three aspect ratio, which is wider in portrait mode. And it's really nice when taking handwritten notes using the Apple Pencil. Now, another important difference is that the Tab S9 FE has a fully laminated display. So the display, the touch layer, and the cover glass are fused together into a single display assembly. And the image looks like it's printed right on top of the glass. On the iPad 10, there is an air gap between the display and the combination of cover glass and touch layer. For a lot of things like watching movies, surfing the web, or playing games, it's not really something that you're going to notice unless you really look for it. But when you're using the stylus, it does make a difference. So with the iPad 10, you'll be able to see separation between the tip of the Apple Pencil and the content that's being created, especially if you're looking at an angle. With the Tab S9 FE, because the image looks like it's on top of the glass, it's going to look like the tip of the S Pen is touching the line or the content that you're creating, which of course is better. The one advantage of a non-laminated display is that if the display gets damaged, most of the time it's just the cover glass, so replacement is relatively inexpensive. With a fully laminated display, the entire display assembly has to be replaced, even if you just scratch the cover glass. I'll also also get to a few other important stylus differences in just a moment, but first I want to talk about gaming. So I play a lot of games on my tablets and I was really curious to see how these two would match up. So I was able to play my usual games like Genshin, Asphalt and PUBG, and then of course less demanding games, but there was an obvious difference in both processing power and GPU performance, which did have an impact on more resource intensive games. Now I'll quickly show you benchmarks in the performance section, but this was one of those areas where I could clearly see the advantage of the iPad's A14 chip over the Exynos 1380. Now using PUBG as an example, gameplay was smoother and more responsive on the iPad, and I could play with balanced graphics and extreme frame rate versus balanced graphics and high frame rate on the Tab S9. And then of course I could definitely not get to the 90 FPS that would take advantage of the faster refresh rate on the Samsung display. I had a similar experience with Genshin, which again performed better on the iPad 10, even though it has less RAM than the Tab S9 FE. Now looking ahead, we know that game developers are always looking to push the CPU and GPU, and games are going to evolve and start to demand more and more resources. If I'm looking for a device to keep for the next four or five years or even more, I'm always going to opt for the tablet that has better CPU and GPU performance than what I need right now, 
so it continues to perform well into the future. Now, if you wanna stream and play Xbox games with the Xbox Game Pass app, you can pair an Xbox controller with both tablets and have extremely smooth gameplay as long as you have a reliable internet connection. But there's one area where the Tab S9 FE comes out ahead, and that's storage. The iPad 10 starts out with 64 gigabytes of internal storage versus 128 gigs on the Tab S9 FE. To give you a sense of what that means, iPad OS currently takes up a little over 10 gigabytes of storage, system data takes up another 11 gigs, and PUBG uses a little over 20 gigs. So that's 41 out of 64 available gigabytes already used up with no other apps, files, or photos. Now, both tablets are also available in 256 gigabyte options. With the iPad, that's an additional 150 bucks. And with the Tab S9 FE, it's an extra 70 bucks. Now, the Tab S9 FE also has a micro SD card slot, which you can use to expand the internal storage by up to one terabyte. And you can use this storage for files, photos, videos, and for most apps. We'll talk more about the configuration options later on, but for right now, I just wanna make sure that you have enough storage for all all the apps and the games that you want to install. And that brings me to today's sponsor, Best Buy, and the Western Digital Storage Solutions for Gamers. If you have a PlayStation 5, the Western Digital Black SN850P NVMe SSD is officially licensed. It's extremely easy to install. It's unbelievably fast. And this one terabyte version means that I'm not wasting any time deleting and downloading games when I run out of space. If you prefer Xbox, then check out the WD Black C50. It's designed in partnership with Xbox, it has a built-in heatsink to avoid lag, and it's designed to specifically meet the speed and lifespan requirements of your Xbox. And finally, if you prefer a gaming PC, check out the WD Black D10 desktop hard drive. It's designed to offer additional storage for demanding PC gaming rigs, it's plug and play, and it gives your gaming PC the reliable performance boost and capacity it needs. Not all SSDs and hard drives are created equal, so do it right and visit bestbuy.com to get a super fast Western digital drive that was specifically designed for your gaming needs. And thank you to Best Buy for sponsoring this portion of the video. When we look at the overall design of these tablets, they're quite similar since Apple upgraded from the older iPad 9 design. Both tablets are machined aluminum, both have rounded corners and squared off edges but the Tab S9 FE has slightly smaller bezels. We're getting a fingerprint sensor incorporated into the power button in both devices. On the iPad 10, it's on the short side. On the Tab S9 FE, it's on the longer side, and both have been very accurate and responsive for me. Now, the iPad 10 has four speaker grills versus two on the Tab S9 FE, but both tablets only have two speakers, one on each side. In terms of audio quality, both are good, but not as good as the higher end models. And the Tab S9 FE speakers are a tad louder and sound a bit brighter. One thing that I found when I'm gaming and holding the tablet in my hand is that on the iPad Air 4, I'm actually covering the speakers with my hand. So there are two other grills, so the sound can't come from there. But on the Tab S9 FE, the speakers are on the top if I'm holding it in landscape mode, so I'm not blocking them. Now, personally, I'm okay either way because whenever I'm gaming, I'm wearing a headset, but I just wanted to mention it in case you don't. The Tab S9 FE also has an IP68 rating, so we're getting protection from water and dust. Now, obviously, this is important if you take your tablet with you when you travel or when you go outside, but even when you're just around the house, it's nice to have additional protection from accidental spills. Now, both tablets use a USB-C port for charging and connecting accessories, which brings me to the stylus and keyboard options. The iPad 10 is compatible with the first generation Apple Pencil, which costs $99. It pairs and charges using a cable, and it requires a USB to lightning adapter. The iPad is also compatible with the newer USB-C Apple Pencil, which charges and pairs with a wire, but doesn't require an adapter. It costs $79. It doesn't offer pressure sensitivity, but it does magnetically attach to the side of the iPad. The Tab S9 FE comes with a free S Pen, which can be stored on the side or on the back of the tablet. It has a programmable button, and it doesn't need to be charged in order to write or draw. Now, in terms of the actual writing experience, the Apple Pencil has a firm tip, so it's a little harsher when it hits the glass, and it feels like you're writing on a single sheet of paper that's placed on a hard surface. The S Pen has a softer tip to it, so when it hits the glass, 
it gives a little and it feels more like you're writing on a full pad of paper where the pages compress as you press down. Now, one isn't objectively better than the other for every single use, and it's going to come down to which one feels better for you. So as always, I hope this description helps you make a choice. Now, as far as the camera systems, the iPad has a more capable rear-facing camera in terms of resolution and frame rate. Now, both tablets have a 12 megapixel front-facing camera, and here's a quick sample. Here's a camera and microphone test of the iPad 10 and the Tab S9 FE. This should give you a pretty good idea of the type of image quality that you're going to get and the type of audio quality that you should expect from each tablet. Now, both tablets also have the front-facing camera on the long edge, so they're always properly framed during video calls. Now, when we talked about gaming, I mentioned the performance of the iPad's A14 Bionic and the Tab S9 FE's Exynos 1380. So let's quickly look at single and multi-core performance, where we see the Apple chip pull ahead. We also see it scored noticeably higher in GPU performance, which helps explain some of the differences we saw. Now, of course, these are just benchmark scores. So what about just typical real life use? Well, if you're surfing the web, watching video or going on social media, it doesn't really matter that much. You can easily do that with both tablets, but the iPad does feel snappier and more responsive. And I would expect it to continue to perform better for longer. Now, if you're doing something like very heavy video editing, then again, the iPad would be a better choice. When multitasking, the iPad can run two apps in split view plus additional apps in a slide over window. The Tab S9 FE can run three tiled apps at the same time with more flexibility when it comes to how much real estate each app takes. It can also run multiple floating windows, which can be resized and you can even change the transparency. Now, both tablets have a customizable dock, but the Tab S9 FE also has a super handy side panel for quick access. Now, both tablets can be used used as additional displays for compatible desktops and laptops. Apple calls this feature sidecar and Samsung calls it second screen. These are great features and you should all use them. But if you're looking for more of a laptop replacement, the Tab S9 FE has DeX, which I love, but there is one limitation here. So if you're new to Samsung, DeX essentially reboots the tablet with an OS that looks very similar to what you get on a laptop. You've got a taskbar where you can minimize and see active apps. You have an actual desktop with icons and you can run multiple floating windows or snap windows to the side of the display. But unlike with the higher end Tab S9, S9 Plus, and S9 Ultra, you can't connect an external monitor and run a dual display setup. Now, the iPad 10 does let you mirror your display to an external display, but it doesn't stretch out to fill the entire monitor because the iPad 10 doesn't fully support Stage Manager and it's not an extended display. So when it comes to being a laptop replacement, it's still a win for the Tab S9 FE, but not quite as good as what you get with the higher end models. Now, battery life is always interesting because it comes down to what you actually do. So comparing these devices when they were new, I'm looking at about 10 hours on the iPad 10, about 13 to 14 hours on the Tab S9 FE. Again, depending on what I was doing. Now, of course, these times are not of me gaming the entire time and they include things like surfing the web, watching video, using social media apps, and working with productivity apps. Now, when you're looking at available Apps, the Google Play Store, the Galaxy Store, and the Apple App Store have a ton of options for pretty much everything that you need. In general, I'm going to give the edge to the iPad 10 because the apps seem to be better optimized for a tablet. But as I've said in recent videos, the gap continues to shrink. Several creative apps like Affinity Photo and Procreate are only available for the iPad, but it's great to see that there's an Android version of LumaFusion. Now, both tablets run the latest available operating systems, and Samsung promises four years of OS upgrades and five years of security updates. Now, Apple devices typically get longer support than that. So when I take into account the improved CPU and GPU performance, I'm going to give the iPad the edge in terms of longevity. I also want you to consider other products that you own, which make up your ecosystem. Now, Samsung has made some really impressive improvements over the past few years adding much needed integration between multiple devices, wireless file and text sharing, and additional cross-device integrations. And even though the gap again continues to shrink, 
Apple's ecosystem is still more complete and more tightly integrated due to the fact that they have full control over the hardware and software on all of their devices. Now, when we look at configuration options and prices from the official stores, we already talked about the storage options, but both the 64 and 256 gigabyte models of the iPad 10 come with four gigabytes of RAM. With the Tab S9 FE, the 128 gigabyte model comes with six gigs of RAM and the 256 gigabyte model comes with eight. So here Here's how I look at this choice. The iPad is more powerful and will be more capable if you plan on keeping your device for many years and you like to play more demanding games at higher settings or performing other resource intensive tasks. It also offers better optimized apps, access to some creative specific apps and better long-term support. The Tab S9 FE is smaller and lighter. It offers additional protection with an IP68 rating. It comes with a free S Pen, more storage, expandable storage, more capable multitasking, and better battery life. Now you should see how the Tab S9 Ultra compares with the previous model. You know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.